The Education Secretary, Gavin Williamson, has spent most of the past year twiddling his thumbs. When schools closed in January, it became apparent he'd done virtually nothing since the start of the pandemic to aid home learning. Kids still didn't have laptops after months. It was his job. He didn't do it. He was also silent when Rishi Sunak spiked a plan by the education czar to invest billions in catch-up programs. Right? This is, this is an education secretary who doesn't really like to do his job. However, this week, Williamson finally found a voice, finally found an issue which was worth him pricking up his ears and paying attention. And that was to express his outrage. The group of students decided to replace a picture of the Queen in their common room. Now, the story was revealed by the right-wing blog Guido Forks. A committee of students from Magdalene's middle common room agreed by a substantial majority to take the portrait of Queen Elizabeth down from their wall and to explore replacing the portrait with art by or of other influential and inspirational people. One student claimed that patriotism and colonialism are not really separable. Another claimed the move was not about cancelling the Queen, saying the committee was not capable of doing so. This is about our communal space and making people feel welcome. I think that Guido were trying to pull out, you know, the most outrageous quotes there. They all actually sound very, very reasonable to me. Of course, patriotism and colonialism are not really separable. That doesn't mean we necessarily have to throw patriotism out the window, but we can't pretend there is no relationship between those two things. And this wasn't cancelling the Queen. More importantly than this, a middle common room is a student union for people of a particular college who are master's students, essentially. Like it's going to be a few dozen people, like a hundred or so people. They've decided that they want to change the picture on their wall. I can imagine it's above a pool table or something. Really, really not a significant decision. But Guido think it's a story. And Gavin Williamson thinks it's a story because in response to this article from Guido Fawkes, Gavin Williamson tweeted, Oxford University students removing a picture of the Queen is simply absurd. She is the head of state and a symbol of what is best about the UK. During her long reign, she has worked tirelessly to promote British values of tolerance, inclusivity and respect around the world. She was the head of the British empire. I, I'm not really sure if the values of tolerance, inclusivity and respect for everyone around the world were you know, the values she represented. We also know that within the time span of her reign, the House of, of Windsor had a policy of not employing anyone from an ethnic minority. So uh, she's not necessarily the image of inclusivity that many people in the British establishment want to paint her as. But more importantly than that, this doesn't matter. This is not something that an education secretary should be commenting on. This is students deciding to replace one picture with another picture. It's like, if I take down a picture of Prince and replace it with a picture of Dua Lipa in my bedroom, I am not cancelling Prince. I am changing the picture. Here, they are not cancelling the Queen. They are changing a picture. Gavin Williamson would much rather talk about this, about what's on the wall in a common room in Oxford than, you know, I don't know, the fact that he plunged thousands of young people's future into chaos during the A-level grade saga when, you know, he decided to allow an algorithm that discriminated against people based on their, you know, where they live and what their class is um, to decide student grades. Or the fact that, you know, he's repeatedly tried to force teachers and students back into unsafe working environments. Um, without the proper precautions and only, you know, doing last minute U-turns when the trade unions get involved. Or, you know, the abysmal decision to revoke free school meals and summer holidays in the middle of a pandemic. Um, or, you know, the fact that even things like the laptop scheme, which is so vital for so many kids in the middle of a pandemic where so many people are having to rely on remote learning, the fact that that hasn't been rolled out nearly to the scale that was either promised or that is needed, or he doesn't want to talk about the fact that, you know, 92% of 6,000 teachers that were polled said that he should resign. Um, so he doesn't have any confidence in the workers that are in the sector that he's responsible for. He would much rather talk about this um, than be challenged on any of those issues. So it's not surprising to me that, you know, he's coming out guns blazing because this is essentially a cheap shot to galvanize a base at the expense of a group of like maybe a few dozen students who don't have the means to defend themselves against the weight of an abusive tabloid media 
um, which is, you know, the full weight of which we are currently seeing, and their own Secretary of Education essentially inciting a hate campaign against them. You know, this isn't a story like a tiny group of students have democratically decided what they want to do with their communal space. That is something they are perfectly entitled to do. Like, is that not the basis of like free speech and debate and democracy? These students had a debate, they had a discussion, they made a democratic decision. And what is essentially happening here is that the Secretary of Education is trying to punish students for taking down a picture of the head of state from their common room. Like, is that the mark of a democratic and a free society? Who's the snowflake here? Like, is that the mark of British values that are apparently so uniquely British and yet seem to be violated by the British state on a regular basis? And this tells me that, you know, this whole free speech moral panic where, you know, the biggest threats to free speech are like, you know, students and like, black people and trans people, you know, it's a complete Trojan horse for forcing people to accept and promote reactionary and bigoted views because the actual consensus for such views is shrinking. So they need to resort to whatever they can, especially these cheap tactics, to ensure that these positions and views still have to be represented in the mainstream, even though actually amongst the younger generation, the future generations, it doesn't hold that much cachet. And I think when it comes to how we should respond to this, it's really easy to kind of brush this off as like a silly distraction. And, and to an extent it is, you know, it's not like the most deep or serious thing, but it also, you know, it clearly isn't just that. It's like what we are seeing here is a petty, but very vicious um, backlash to the fact that there is undoubtedly, um, you know, particularly, as I said, amongst young people, a growing radical, anti-racist, anti-colonial consciousness that isn't just accepting, you know, mere representation. It's not saying that, oh, if you just represent us or diversify a bit, then we'll shut up. But it's actually rooting their understanding of anti-racism and anti-colonialism in systemic change of our economic and political systems. They are identifying the role um, that the British state, which includes the monarchy, um, you know, I think there's a lot of thinking, you know, misinformed thinking that the monarchy just has symbolic power. No, they are like the British royal family is like one of the biggest landowners in the world. Like land is not a symbolic form of power. It's actually a very material form of power that is enforced with a lot of violence. Um, but it's it's essentially a, a, a backlash against that changing anti-racist um, consciousness, because I am sure that the establishment media and the government were very shaken at those scenes last summer. Not only um, that black and brown, that young black and brown people were taking to the streets and demanding different kinds of change, but also that young white kids and you know even older white people in rural areas, parts where we don't normally see um, you know big turnout for anti-racist demonstrations, we even saw it there. And so instead of actually reckoning with that. They are basically just kind of picking fights with groups of people who can't defend themselves and caricaturing the people who are pushing for change. And they're enforcing top down legislation to stop the conversation. And that's what we see in the measures to ban the use of anti-capitalist materials as, as teaching materials. And that's why, as silly as it might seem, we have to defend these students. Because first of all, this is a deliberate attempt here to basically spark a hate campaign that they don't deserve. I know what it's like to be on the receiving end of that. Um, it's incredibly destroying. It's incredibly destructive. I know many people who are still picking up the pieces of the mental health impacts of being the subject of a hate campaign led by the government and led by um, tabloid media. But it's also, this is also how the right is trying to galvanize power in the face of shifting terrain using these cheap tabloid style um, tactics. It's an attempt to delegitimize um, using the full power of the state and the media, those who are pushing to change things. And we mustn't dismiss these students. We have to defend them because it's important that that delegitimization strategy for all of our sakes is not successful. And that at a time when so many powerful forces are trying to demonize them, we need to show that there is a large mass of us that are willing to back them up. That was incredibly well put. Now, if you want to hear more analysis like that from Dahlia on the stories we cover every Wednesday, do make sure you subscribe to the channel. Of course, we put out videos every week with all of our fantastic 
contributors. Now I'm going to look at a more, a few more responses to this story. So there was a good um, statement actually from the president of Magdalen College. Here are some facts about Magdalen College and Her Majesty the Queen. The Middle Common Room is an organisation of graduate students. They don't represent the college. A few years ago, in about 2013, they brought a print of a photo with the Queen to decorate their common room. They recently voted to take it down. Both of these decisions are their own to take, not the college's. Magdalen strongly supports free speech and political debate and the MCR's right to autonomy. Maybe they'll vote to put it up again. Maybe they won't. Meanwhile, the photo will be safely stored. Being a student is about more than studying. It's about exploring and debating ideas. It's sometimes about provoking older generations. Looks like that isn't so hard to do these days. So if you are one of the people currently sending obscene and threatening messages to the college staff, you might consider pausing and ask yourself whether that is really the best way to show your respect for the Queen, or whether she'd be more likely to support the traditions of free debate and democratic decision making that we are keeping alive at Magdalen. I'm not necessarily sure if she can say, "Oh, the Queen is massively committed to democratic decision making." She is, of course, a hereditary monarch and was the head of the British Empire. But in any case, the overall point, the defence of the students, is is pretty good there. I, I thought that was was a reasonable statement that gave some important context to this story. And one thing she definitely is right about is how easy it now is to provoke the older generation. Now, the decision by a few students to change a picture didn't just provoke a response from Williamson. It also got a whole front page in the Daily Mail. So they thought this was the most important story. Outrageous Oxford students vote to axe Queen. It's important to note they didn't vote to axe the Queen. You know, th that would be, you know, they voted to abolish the Queen or something much more significant that will change the picture above the pool table or next to the coffee machine to a different picture that people in our student body associate more with. I mean, it's, it's completely sensationalist clickbait head, headline. I want to go now to someone who probably should have known better. Um, Andy Burnham was asked about this, being interviewed by Nick Ferrari. Let's take a look. Noting that your great city has some tremendous universities and you yourself went to the other place, a word on Oxford University students deciding to take down a portrait of the Queen because it makes them feel uncomfortable. Well, I, I, God, I just—I mean, I, you know, I can't re really relate to that if I'm if I'm honest. You know, I think this kind of these kind of gestures are, are getting a bit out of hand. Uh, if, if I'm honest, Nick, I mean, I don't support that. Um, you know, we are all, I think, always uh, should respect the Queen, Indeed. but particularly now, given things that have happened uh, in in the last few, few yeah. months. So, no, I don't support that. You know, I, you know, let, let's let's get a sense of proportion and a bit of a bit of uh, respect back people can air their views but those kind of gestures i think are divisive actually they just divide people and um and i, I don't think uh, they, they they achieve much to be honest well said andy come on like for a start that's a lie he says i can't really relate to this now you were you know you were in university as a socialist right i'm i'm sure the idea that you didn't want the queen above your coffee machine or your pool table you, you might not agree. You can definitely relate to that. Come on, this this is not a, a complex point. You know, it, it's not alien. You must know some Republicans in your life, even if you're not one. I mean, probably he is one. Come on, let's face it, right? But he won't admit it because he wants to be leader of the Labour Party and ultimately the Prime Minister. So, so he's got to keep up this pretense that he's really supportive of the Queen. The most ridiculous part of that answer, though, was Andy Burnham saying, let's get a sense of proportion. Now, he is a senior Labour politician, mayor of Manchester, and he is telling Nick Ferrari that he condemns people changing a picture in their common room for a different picture. And he's saying it's other people who don't have a sense of proportion. Give me a break. You know, Andy Burnham has had a good run, right? He's had a good run over the past few weeks. He's made some decent arguments, made some good stands against the government. But going on national radio and telling students they need to get a sense of proportion for changing one poster to another poster, it's completely, completely bizarre. Now, you might say, look, oh, the question posed by Nick Ferrari, maybe Andy Burnham didn't quite get how insignificant this was. I, I presume he did. I mean, this was huge on last night's news. So that, that was this morning. This story broke last night. And also, there's no harm in an interview in saying so. Nick, you're saying they voted to take down a picture. Where was the picture? You know, you can say, look, I would have left the picture up, but I'm not going to condemn a bunch of students for changing a poster. It's it's frankly very, very embarrassing. 
Andy Burnham's trying to put himself forward as sort of like, I'm the reasonable leader guy who could actually challenge the establishment. And I'm not just going to grovel on my knees to try and make royalists think that I'll do everything they possibly ask. Do you think that was damaging to him? I mean, it's cowardice. It's, it's cowardice, it's pandering, it's the easy way out. And I think that he needs to really think about what his pathway to power is and think about the role that people who have experienced the brunt force, the brute force, sorry, um, of you know the state, particularly during empire, um, the role that those people are going to play in his pathway to power maybe should reflect a little bit on what he owes them. This would have been such an easy conversation. All he needed to do was say, look, I'm not here to talk about what a few dozen students do with their decor in their university common room. I'm here to talk about X, Y, Z things. But instead, what he's doing, and I, and I have to bring this back to my own personal experience of being a student and having the full weight, like I cannot explain to you what it must feel like for those students to see that front page of the Daily Mail saying that they have voted to axe the Queen. Like that is incredibly inflammatory, disgusting language. And I dread to think what those students email boxes. I dread to think what is in those things right now. And Andy Burnham has added to that pylon with Nick Ferrari. So, you know, What's, whose side are you on? It's disgusting. It's just, it's pandering. It's cowardice. It's unimaginative. And it just tells me that he doesn't really have the tools to deal with the terrain that a lot of these issues are being fought on. And I go back to the thing that I said about how, you know, in many ways it seems silly and in many ways, and it is silly in many ways, but underpinning it is a very serious difference in ideology and a very serious gener intergenerational um, shift that is happening. And I don't think Andy Burnham wants to be uh, on the wrong side of it. And I think even if he wanted to stay neutral or even if he wanted to kind of, you know, distance himself from it, there was a very easy way to do that. You know, Andy Burnham knows how to deflect. I'm sure he's had his media training and he actively chose to join in what must be an incredibly terrifying um, moment for a few students who should feel able to participate in the democratic processes of their university without feeling that they might be exposed by the Daily Mail, by Greedo Forks, by their own government. You rightly point out the, the issues with the head of the college's statement. I think the fact that the head of the college came out and defended those students shows us, you know, that we've come a little bit further ahead. Because when we were doing that work in 2015 in um, around the Rose Moss Fall campaign, the chancellor of the university called up a radio station and said that if we don't like it here, we should go to China um, because we don't value free speech or, you know, we should go somewhere else if we don't like it here. So, you know, the fact that, the, the, yeah, I'm not wow, even Wow, I did not know that. Wow. Chris Patterson, who, who is, by the way, was the last colonial governor of Hong Kong, who was the mm. chancellor of Oxford University, called up a radio station and was like, if the students don't like it here, they should go somewhere else. So the fact that that, you know, as as mm. as problematic as that state as pro many problems that, that statement might have, I'm glad that she actually said that because I'm sure that will be much more relief to those students. Mm.